welcome back for another weekly vlog. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kristen Lankford and I am a pre-K teacher in Florida. This week's vlog is all about spiders for our theme. We're working on what an accident is and how to handle when you do something to someone if it was an accident, less tattling. Um, we are also working on 3D shapes and math. In reading, we're kind of focusing on some retelling and the letter T. So I'm going to, as usual, start the video showing you our Play-Doh, our art, and our sensory so that we can clean those up. And then if I have time, I'll show you some of our small group stuff as well. All right, so look, lived in Play-Doh. We just got done playing, it's lunchtime. So we have another rotation after lunch of our social centers. We, this one, this is one of my favorite Play-Doh bins. It is making spiders. So we just gave them some Play-Doh. So we gave them some black beans that they can push in there, some eyeballs, some little bees up to be legs for the spider. We also threw in some spider rings, super fun. The rolling pin today, I had a little girl say, um, can you pass me that rolling pin? I was like, wow, great vocabulary. For art this week, it's a little different. We went away from the spider theme because we are doing a multicultural event. So we made these ponchos and the kids are just coming over and using colored dabbers to decorate them. And for sensory, we kept it simple. We have these little rubber things we've used before from Lakeshore. Put some spider rings in here as well as spiders with different colors. So it's like the number and then on the other side, it'll have the dots for them to match together. In addition to the ponchos, we are also working on making some sombreros. They actually look like Curious George man with the yellow hat right now, but we're gonna crumble up some of these squares and like put them around like little pom-poms and then put string underneath to make it like a sombrero. Hello, happy Wednesday. It is cooking day. We also, um, Miss Whitney is on a field trip with her daughter as well as my daughter, so we're down a para. So it's been a little wonky today as per usual, but <laughs> Miss Sam is a saint and let me come have a little break during lunch, so I just, chow down my food and I'm going to try and get through a couple things. I was unable to record how we set up our cooking, but I did take a picture so you can see what it looks like here. We made tea is for traffic lights and I will show you one of the students' books that we did. Also, these are not actual glasses. They're blue light glasses because my eyes are like, I don't know. I'm just trying anything. They keep getting dry and then they get watery and hot mess. Okay. This is an easy one. We didn't have to use the oven or anything, but we used graham crackers, chocolate icing, and then M&Ms, red, yellow, and green. We also got a ton of new toys in, so I was able to show them a traffic signal with our car area, so that was very helpful. We filled this out first, then they built the graham cracker, then they ate it and had chocolate icing everywhere, and so then we cleaned up. Then we came back and we drew a picture of it, so a brown rectangle. They had to use black for like the icing to make it like a different color and then they drew their little M&Ms and if they liked it or not. So, always fun on cooking day. It gets a little hectic, but we survived. I'm still trying to figure out my schedule on Wednesdays because sometimes like they go outside and then I can set everything up and then they come back in and then it like takes too long and we don't get to our literacy centers before social centers. So, like today, we couldn't go outside, so we did like a couple like exercises on the rug, and then we were fine. We still had time. So I think it's like days that we have to use the oven. Maybe the things just take longer. I don't know. It's just like a struggle. Like I said two seconds ago, we got a huge shipment in, and I'm like blown away. Um, we didn't have all of our supplies in the beginning of the year. We still don't have our curriculum, but we got so many new toys. And so super exciting, but everywhere is full. The cabinets are full, the shelves were full, the closet is like super full and like a hot mess and I can't stand going in there, but we don't have any shelves, you know? So yesterday during nap time, we were just unboxing, actually during play centers, Miss Sam and Miss Whitney were out there with the other pairs next door, just opening boxes, breaking them down, sorting the materials for each classroom. And then during nap time, we had the stuff in here and we were just trying to like find places to put it. We got blocks finally, but they're those cardboard blocks, so they all came flat and we had to build them all. And we got a ton of car things. We also got like a little train set, but we don't have like a table for that. So like, thankful obviously the kids are pumped we've got so much dress up stuff but we are still trying to figure out where to put all this stuff i mean there's like i'm looking around right now and there's just like stuff everywhere we're still surviving like there's space for the kids but whoa 
So anyways, um, I'm gonna show you some of the new things that we got. Okay, one of the things that we did change is we're going, these are just too big. We have to find somewhere else for them to go. The kids can't use them. We use them to step on when we need to hang something up, but we're gonna slide the dollhouse in here, and then when it's time to play, we're just gonna pull it out and like put it here, or put it in the library, or somewhere close to here, instead of having it up on the shelf over there. We got all these new books. We actually got two sets of the same thing, so we're gonna share it because my class got two sets and the class next door got two sets, so we're gonna find a kindergarten teacher. Here's some stuff that they're actually playing with right now. We got these Lakeshore keys. We got another shape puzzle. We got bears, finally. Can you believe it? We didn't even have bears for counting and color sorting. And then we got this one, which I had in my other classroom. And I didn't really use it a lot in my other classroom, but this year I have like three friends that this is perfect for them. Okay, and then while I'm over here, I might as well show you the pumpkin patch. <laughs> this video is all over the place. Miss Sam made the cutest little fence. So we have that here. We have our pumpkin patch ticket prices for who's coming and how much they cost. And obviously we have our pretend money over there. Um, when you come in, we do still have some of the kitchen things out because they like to still play with the kitchen items. We got these brand new baby dolls, four of them. They are super cute. Look, all four, so cute. And then we got this new dress up thing as well. Miss Sam told me to take it out when I was showing you guys the pumpkin patch, but clearly I forgot. So we have it in here. It has amazing things and it's not really part of pumpkin patch, but Halloween, you know, they could dress up and have a Halloween costume at the pumpkin patch. I will slide it over so you can see how cute the board is. So, we have hay rides, and then down here, they were putting like babies in it and like, you know, traveling around, so cute. Then here's the board, super cute, little spooky house. There's a witch flying up there, a moon over there. We have our sign that says pumpkin patch, just in case they didn't know what it was. Um, a sign that says pick your pumpkins here. And then hay pictures, because we have these hay barrels and our corn stalks that got knocked down. Miss Sam's gonna be so disappointed that I didn't fix that before the video. Then if you turn here, we obviously have all the little pumpkins. We have the pumpkin shop so they can buy sunflowers, small pumpkins, medium pumpkins, large pumpkins. That was the goal, but unfortunately we were unable to find different sizes. So they, you know, they're just assuming that these ones are small and maybe these ones are the large ones even though they're not really that big and that's okay and then we have our little signs for small pumpkins and large pumpkins i found these they're getting a little smushed but these were at walmart and we just put like tissue paper inside of them or real paper i don't know and so it's like little food items that they can buy goes cute with the theme we got some vines here cutest little scarecrow ever and then our sign that says pumpkin patch so if you come right here it has the open and close sign, and as you can see, this doesn't really fit this one because we had to switch where we had these buckets because we needed to use both sides for storage of all the new stuff. We used to use this side for lunch boxes, and so we couldn't do that anymore. Okay, so over here we sorted the dinosaurs that we already had into an actual bucket. They were all getting mixed up. We kept all of our bugs together, but then they sent us more like animals to add to the animals we already had. And then we also have farm animals and even more wild animals, but we already had a lot of them, so we're saving those for when we lose some. They also sent us one of these, which is great because we did not have a lot of kind of three-year-old toys. So this, this is a fun activity. It doesn't last very long, but it has all the things inside of it and they're soft toys and they can match it to the pieces around there and then putting it in and out. We moved our floor puzzles over here. We have extra puzzles, because we have a million puzzles galore, and our potato heads. So it's in the pumpkin patch, but the kids know that it's not part of it, so they just don't touch it. That's good. We got these listening phones that I actually pulled out some for my guided reading group today. And then we also have these stacking cups that we're gonna use probably in sensory. And then if we come this way, this toy goes on that shelf over there too on the bottom and we put it out today. It's really fun. Okay, and then <laughs> finally got our blocks that we built. These are so cute. They are little stations. So this one is, there we go, post office. And they have a hospital school. We have a couple under here too. We got some new cars. We also got new down here like wooden type cars. And we had these cars already, but we put them in a bucket. We also have 
these types of cars, which actually go very well with the buildings. And it came with the signs that I was telling you guys about for our traffic light is in there somewhere. And we still have these push cars, a million cars. So cars is, cars is a lot. And then we put our people, families here too, for when they play with blocks or cars, they could use it. These are emotion Legos. So we still have that as a block option. And what we do is like, we only put out a couple. So if we put out cars, we'll say, okay, you can play with these and these cars, or maybe we'll put the big cars out and like these kind of cars, depending on which kids are there, you know? And then for blocks, we'll put out these blocks, but not these blocks or these blocks, you know? So we pick and choose. Like I said, we switched our buckets here. There's a couple things we switched out. Let's see what else we got. Over here, we made our art cart and put these rolling paint, I don't know if you can see that, there we go, roll-on painters, and we have ink pads, and they got us these stamps as well. Then we still have markers, glue, depending on what we need. We still have our crayons for them to draw. We have these markers if they're gonna draw in here, and then paint cups, finally. A trick that I saw, we haven't used these before, is to put a Ziploc inside of the paint cup, then put the paint in, that way it's easy to clean when you need to get rid of it. So we're only letting two people go to art for this. And then for some extra storage area, we do have a lot of like arts and crafts supplies down here, all their notebooks that we use this for. And then we have three kids cubbies in here. These are like our half day kids. So we only have a couple areas where we can fit stuff, but they sent us all these felt retelling. I think there's like the napping house and it looked like spilt milk, I think, and one other. And then we added some magnet toys here some magnet toys here and there's another bucket of magnet toys i don't know where they are but it goes here and the reason we did that is so that they can play on here with magnets so lots of things are changing but we're we're getting there the other new thing we got is the train tracks and the little cars another one right but i think two years ago i had a car table that we used with train tracks we hot glued it on it was amazing obviously we don't have it here and we really have nowhere to put it if we did so it's in a bucket and we pull it out and we just let them build their own track on the rug and then we keep it for now under the computer table over there because you know every space counts okay i feel like this video is over the place. I, I showed you our theme of spider stuff so far. Obviously we got a million new toys, super exciting, but we are rearranging. There's like cabinets that kind of have things like shoved in and we could probably manipulate things around. We have art supplies in the closet, like on top of the washer and dryer. And there's just a lot. And we're just trying to find spots for everything. Even today we got like two new boxes and we were like, what is happening? But it wasn't that bad. It was, another dress up thing, a firefighter, which I actually noticed was missing. I was like, wow, they didn't send us a firefighter. And then today we got a firefighter. Okay, so I'm gonna go through small groups and for my small group of reading, I'm gonna start with literacy. For reading, my group is going to be that curriculum. That's gonna be my Tuesday talk. I'm gonna go over it with you guys. So I'm not really gonna go into depth, but this week it was letter T. So we did the phonemic awareness part of letter T. We did like learning how to make a letter T verbally. We played thumbs up, thumbs down with what sound words start with letter T, things like that. The first group are the first time they came to me. And then the second time they came to me, we did the letter T book and we used our new whisper phones. And um, after that, they used whiteboards to write the letter T. So those are like my two middle groups. My lowest group, I'm really just working with them on coming to group and doing an activity. So it kind of depends on how their mood is, what I'm grabbing, but like they're, that's what their IEP is focused on. I'm not really focused too much on like the rigor of the activity but I'll do Play-Doh sometimes and I'll try to get them to build the letter T, but they're not really there. Or we'll do some color activity, but the main focus of that group is just come to the table and follow directions. And then my highest group, we're doing that curriculum as well, but we learned the sight word, the, and then we did a, a workbook with the AM word family. And so in the beginning we did like rhyming and sight word for the first day. And then the second time they came to my group, we did a guided reading book where they had to sound out the words. And then we did a, what well, we were supposed to do, a writing activity, but we didn't get to it. 
Okay, so I know I'm not showing you anything, but Tuesday Talk is gonna be all about that curriculum, and then every week when I do my review about what I'm doing in small groups, I'll just tell you like which part of the curriculum we're using. Okay, so for Miss Sam's literacy, it's the same thing as well. She did her letter T craft, and then the second day she worked on her letter T worksheet. And we're kind of going back and forth on the worksheet on whether it's working or not because we're noticing that the kids who already know the letter T, like they're getting so much letter T with me right now that then they go there and it's kind of like, do they really need it again? Like, is it worth it? Are they just like following directions? Are they actually learning from it? So I think our plan, once again, we're gonna change things is the first time they come to her table, they're gonna do the letter craft. And then the second time they come to their table, they're gonna do a themed craft. And the reason we wanna do that is because we want them to have more time to explore like cutting and using actual like glue bottles sometimes. And it's just easier to let them use fun supplies when there's only a couple of them instead of doing a craft with the whole class with like fun supplies and then it just like gets, it gets crazy. So that's the plan. And the other reason that we decided to do our like themed craft with a small group is because when they're picking play centers, this group is like not picking art because it's not process art. And I think there's a lot of value in process art versus product art. So the art project for the theme is very product art. And there's value in those too, but for the right reasons. So what we're gonna do is since I showed you our art supplies that we finally have, we're gonna make our art center process art where they it's kind of like free choice and they're making their own creation it's not like follow these directions whatever and then the product art is going to be in small group as like an instructional activity hope that makes sense then in miss whitney's group she's doing the fine motor journal for flipping through the book and just being able to like write the letter t on there and then with like the higher group she actually worked on building sentences so i'll grab that and show you real quick for the lower group it's either like a whiteboard and like drawing on it or sometimes building the letter with play-doh like just once again all the groups it's like sit here and do something fun even if it's like grabbing a toy to play with and you're like interacting with them because that's what they're working on the second time that the kids go to her she was working on part of that curriculum that I'm doing but it's a sorting activity with a beginning sound so cutting and gluing and just drilling that letter and that sound. So this is what it looks like and it just says starts with T does not start with T so they go over all the pictures what they are thumbs up thumbs down glue them in the correct spot practice writing the T. So that's like one of the rotations that she does. And then the other one is the fine motor journal. This week there was super simple. Um, Miss Whitney wasn't here yesterday, so I had to do it and I was multitasking two groups. So just tracing those uppercase T's, tracing those lowercase T's and trying to make them by themselves. Okay, I don't know if I have time, but I'm gonna try to get through math centers real quick. Math centers was a focus of 3D shapes. So in my table, we did this game called spin and cover. So it's just a little paper clip. They would spin it. They would say the name of the shape and then they had to find a real life example on the board and they used Halloween erasers to cover it. Miss Sam's group had like a million different activities depending on who came to her at her group. But one of them was spider web with a number on it and then they just had these little like orange spiders and they would put that many spiders on the web. This does not say where it came from, but if I can find it from like my downloads last year, I will link it down below. The other part was individual, like different colors, but they have the spiders. This is what's in sensory. So we put it in sensory and then we also put it at small group. So they would find the number and then find the dot and match it. And so there's like a yellow group of them. There's a blue group of them, a green, there's like a million. So every kid got to do their own, easy. And then Miss Whitney was also doing 3D shapes and we have these like little shapes that they could manipulate and they played a game called spin and stack. So this is what it looks like. They would spin, well first she went over what all, they, all the shapes were with these. They would spin, they would name what it was, and they would put it down. And then they would spin again and they would try to see if they could stack it on top. So obviously like the lower ones it was just like fun and she would just talk about, oh that that's rolling, that's why it wouldn't do it. But the higher group today she was like, try it first, does it work, does it not work, why does it work or not work? So. 
that's it and then computers obviously i'll come back later today and wrap up this video maybe or friday as usual stressful hello happy friday <laughs> It snuck up fast and I have like a million things that I uh, still have to do to get my week ready. Like send my parent email out. I think I sent out my weekly cooking email already, but I gotta check on that. Still gotta finish lesson plans, still gotta finish my slides and still have to record my Tuesday talk. So killing it as per usual. Anyways, I'm gonna fly through this. Social emotional. This is the card we did. We talked all about accidents this week and I did a really cute little song it's like everyone makes accidents say are you okay I'll try to link that down below for you it's from second steps I love when I can find it on YouTube instead of me having to like put the CD in and all that and then we also did the Coco Melon accident song which was really cute too but kind of kind of long it keeps their attention though because they love coco melon and it just shows like kids making mistakes and that it's okay the teacher comes and helps them and stuff so we did that like each day one of those videos and then we did our activities so obviously we talked about how it was an accident and then the top three things that you say is i'm sorry you tell them it was an accident and then you ask them if they're okay and other than that the other days we just did a lot of role playing where it was pretty cute like one kid would back like walk backwards and they knocked the other kid over and if we did it the kid fell over and then they practiced saying the words other things too like that actually happen in the class like getting in line and like pushing into someone cutting and things like that we used our our words throughout the day of how we can handle that situation and then that's pretty much it today friday we usually like wrap it up with a book so we read this story it's called beautiful oops and it's by barney Salzburg. It's super cute, very short, but it's fun and engaging. It just shows little things like mistakes. Like, look, they ripped their paper, but you can turn it into an alligator mouth. And another one of the favorite ones was they bent on this page. It says a bent sheet of paper, and they turned it into a penguin. So just showing them that, like, sometimes things happen that are mistakes on your work and accidents, but you don't have to be upset about it because you can turn it into something else. They love it, it's very interactive. Moving on, for math this week, we did 3D shapes, so all we did was Jack Hartman's 3D shape song. I told you during our small groups what we did, and then just for whole group, we did a shape a day. So the cone, we talked about how it can roll and that it has a circle on the bottom, that's like the, the face of it. So just different 3D shapes each day, and honestly, they are, they're learning that vocabulary. I was very impressed. And then for Friday, you know, we don't do small groups, so we did a 2D shape bingo game. I left it over there. We just got it brand new from that shipment that we got in. So that was a lot of fun. We had to learn skills of, you know, listening and paying attention and not shouting out, I got it, or being upset that you didn't get it. And yeah, we only played two rounds. and It was first time playing bingo. Okay, then for literacy, on Monday, we read our When Tilly Turtle Came to Tea. And then obviously in the morning work, we make our letter T hats. So when we do this, we just talk about like how we write the letter. We do a letter song from Jack Hartman. And then we read the story. We talk about all the things that start with the letter T, which are like a million things, almost like tongue twisters. And even on the back page, it's like a find the things that start with the letter T. On Tuesday, we did a fiction story, The Very Busy Spider. They love this one. And we worked on retelling. So we read the story and on the um, on my screen, I had like animal pictures that I got from like a freebie on Teachers Pay Teachers and I just took a screenshot so that they were on there instead of having like a manipulative for them. And we read the story and told them to pay attention to which animals come to visit. And then at the end, we talked about, we put like a number one for which one was first and a number two for second and all the way to the end of the story. And then of course, every kid got a chance to come and touch the web because it's like 3D kind of like pokes out. And then on Wednesday, we did cooking, which I told you guys about. On Thursday, we did a nonfiction book on Mayan about spiders in general. Learned that they can have six to eight eyes, eight legs, and lots of creepy facts that I I know the kids love it, but I'm like, every time I read it, I'm like, ew. Like they, they stick their fangs into prey and it turns them into liquid and then they suck it up. I'm like, that is disgusting. 
but one of my parents actually messaged me and was like, we are learning so many spider facts today because our kid's coming home and telling us all these things. I'm like, that's why we do it because they're learning, you know, even though I'm like, ew, gross. And then today is Friday, so we do show and share. Poem this week was an easy one, Itsy Bitsy Spider. We have some cutouts of like a spout, a gray spout, and a spider and a sun that we're gonna glue together. That's after lunch as well, so I can't show you that yet. And our playground is built. Super exciting, but it has to be like inspected, and it's still a dirt pit, so they have to get the turf people out here, and we're actually having trouble with the turf that our like big field has because we're pre-k to eighth grade so our middle school has like a field and it's like not draining so i'm like great but you have to come fix that they're definitely going to take forever to do our turf as well hopefully it's a different company but doubtful we have to start planning the rest of our costumes i don't know if i told you guys this but we're going to be bumblebees and the teachers are going to be beekeepers so I've been buying different supplies, so next week's vlog, I'll show you some of the things that we've made so far for that. We'll do a trick-or-treating thing on Halloween. Next week's theme is pumpkins, and then the week after that is Halloween theme. I think that's it. I kind of flew through that. Hopefully, hopefully it makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off up here. As usual, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this video, don't forget that thumbs up and those comments down below. It really helps with other people being able to find the video and help more teachers with ideas. See you later, bye.